the Wildlife Observer Network. All right. Well, welcome to the Wildlife Observer Network. This is our first um, attempt at a video for, well, no, there's been another Zoom recorded. So this is my first attempt at doing a Zoom. And this is for the first episode of Field Gear Reviews. Um, this is where we're going to review some gear. And I have a really good friend, Chris, who lives. Do you want to go by Chris? Do you want to use your last name? It's up to you. Chris is fine. Chris works. Chris, and you you do a, a you do bushcraft and birding, birding and bushcraft. Instagram. Birding and bushcraft. Yep. People are yeah. You, so you're fine with sharing that, right? Yeah, yeah. So and that's just just birding and bushcraft on Instagram, right? And that's that's easy for them to find. Just that's easy to find. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. we're both birders. I actually know Chris because I know his wife uh, first, and then she. Um, met this dude and he turned out to uh, get in the birding. So then we started talking and then I started talking to your wife more and we share, we, so now this has been this big like feedback loop of, of us all mm -hmm. having interests that have are in common. And now we're all, we've all been uh, um, hanging out, went to visit you out in, out in the Pacific Northwest and we had an epic birding trip. Uh, but you have, you're really into gear and you're really into, um, well, bushcraft. And so you're in the, um, and I think a lot of birders kind of just get into Subaru and get out and don't really um, get out in the field. But this Wildlife Observer Network is for um, wildlife enthusiasts in general. So there's a lot of us that do field research. So I think a lot of these, a lot of this gear will be applicable. Uh, plus, I, I, I'm a, I'm an avid shooter. I don't shoot that as much as if I probably should uh, for how much mm -hmm. I enjoy it. Uh, but I, as a, and I go hunting, but. You know, frankly, I just like birding so much. I don't really get out um, uh, into the field for other reasons as much as I'd like to. But I do enough that I find some gear that I that for other hobbies of mine that I think would go really good for um, for birding and for other you know nature and uh, uh, pursuits. And I think a lot of people for wildlife observation, we don't really have our own dedicated gear. I mean, you know, and so we kind of like borrow gear from other hobbies and apply them. So I think it'd be, this would be, a, when you see reviews online, they tend to be for like, I'm a shooter and I like this gear. I am a, I hike. I like this. I bike. I like this. And so I want to review gear from the aspect of someone who gets out in the field to observe nature in, you know, perhaps they might do field research, perhaps, you know, they might do other things, but, from that perspective, I think that's what makes us unique. The one of the big things people always talk about is the everyday carry. So I think um, right. it's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. In setting up for this interview, you said that you had um, ideas for the philosophy of gear. So if, I don't know if you want to get into that or just start with your um, EDC. But anyway, the image on the screen right now is of your um, – your everyday carrier, your EDC. So if you want to take it away and after this picture, I have all the pictures you sent me of your individual pieces. So we can flip through like a slide. So tell me when you want me to uh, skip. Okay. Well, this is, this is my very basic EDC. This is, I get dressed in the morning. This is an example of what would be in my pockets. Um, depending on what, what my day looks like, it will have to change accordingly. Um, and the first thing you pointed out is I don't have a medical kit in my pocket. I don't have a more practical flashlight in my pocket. But I, if I, uh, you know, if I'm leaving the house, going further away from the truck, these are things that I have near me. And so from this very, very basic things in my pocket, then I would step up to a bag that would have more, you know, I have my, my shoulder bag beside me here. This would be my next step up. And, you know, so this is very basic carry. Uh, just the knife, that is my, my work knife on the weekends. I might carry something that would take less of a beating. If I'm going in the woods, that would change. 
Um, but that is my, my everyday work knife. Um, so what, should I start a slideshow or do you want to talk a little yeah, bit Yeah, sure. Why not? Sure. Why not? All right. So here's your knife. So I, this one? I got a good deal on it and um, I wanted to try it out because of the, the Scandi grind, which is a, a, a really simple grind to maintain. Um, th this is one I, I, I use for work. So it's, and you are um, a carpenter, right? Um, I'm a cabinet maker. Cabinet maker, yeah. So I am, I'm cutting wood, sharpening pencils, opening boxes. Um, but this, uh, uh, different to other jobs maybe, I'm, cu I'm cutting wood more often than most people. So um, a Scandi grind is a, a popular carving grind of the knife. So that, that was what first caught me on this one. But one of the main things I like about this is that it is non-threatening. I am going into people's homes and I am going to use it in people's homes. If I'm pulling out a knife that looks like I'm, I'm pull out a switchblade or something, it's not appropriate. Um, this is obviously a, a tool. And um, so I thought that was a, an important choice for, for th this this particular carry. Um, now, when we get to my knife, you know, in, in my EDC, my knife is only about a $30 knife. And so that you're, this almost costs a hundred dollars more depending on if you get a deal or not. Mm -hmm. How I, I tend to like my knives under $40 just because I lose them. Uh, but you don't have that issue. You, you hold on to your knives and you're, in your I, 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 I don't want to say I've never lost a knife because I have lost knives. Um, but I, I used to always w lose my sunglasses. Then I got an expensive pair of sunglasses and I've never lost them since. I, uh, so I, I wonder how much that is. I, I am also a sucker for gear. So yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. you're not getting the, the, <laughs> yeah, you're getting what you pay for in a lot of this. I mean, a lot of it is you're paying for the name, but, um, I want a tool that I can a hundred percent rely on. I also want a tool that I really like, uh, a tool that you really like you'll use. Um, Alrighty. Should we go to the next slide in your, in your. Sure. Yep. We have your Leatherman here. It was a, uh, was it the free P4? Yeah, I got, this is a recent release. I think it's been out a year from Leatherman. Uh, these are made in Portland, Portland company and uh, somewhat local to <coughs> me. Um, when I first moved to the country, my wife bought me a uh, Leatherman Wave. It was like the first thing, first American purchase. And um, I carried a Wave since then. I mean, the, the Leatherman Wave is a fantastic tool. When they brought this out a year ago, it was supposed to be the tool that replaces the Wave. Um, I, I'm not sure it does, but I, 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 I mean, they're comparable in a lot of ways. Um, Again, not a $30 tool, but I use it for work and I use it all day, every day. I mean, if I'm out camping, I'll use it to lift hot stuff. I'll use the saw on it, the scissors, um, you know, opening cans, screwdriver. I mean, it, it, carrying a multi-tool is simply that. It's a multi-tool, it's always useful. Uh, I'm the, of the same philosophy um, in terms of I carry a, a, a knife a folding knife in addition to a multi-tool. So um, why, but why do you not just carry this? Why do you also carry a, a, fix, a folding knife as well? Um, having one blade, one, one knife. I mean, the, 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 the constant worry is losing or breaking and re needing to rely on a knife and you don't have it. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily choose this style of knife blade. If you're only going to carry one thing, I'd carry the multi-tool, not the knife. But um, carrying both, you get to choose what kind of blade you want to use. And um, while these are perfectly good for opening boxes and cutting string or whatever, it, it, it's not so much, uh, they're not so perfect for 
carving or whatever I need at, at work and whittling in the in the bush and what have you. So that'd be why I carry both. Lovely. Anything so? Anything particular about this before we move on? Um, the seats you needs. You know, we got a saw. We got looks like a file. Um, yeah, I, the 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 pliers is number one tool I use on that, and um, the older Leathermans and some of the cheaper multi tools, the the pliers just weren't as reliable. Um, they've really improved that. I think these contemporary Leathermans are. A fantastically built tools. Yeah, I if, I don't think I actually have uh, the Swiss Army knife I carry um, normally in in my picture of the EDC. I have you know, different EDCs, but uh, I that has a saw, and I actually use that a whole lot. It's a it's a lot. It's a it comes in a lot more handy than you would think for me. Mm -hmm. You know, often you know my, I, if I might need a you know for anything like um, clearing a a bush in front of a bluebird box at work, you know. Like something like that. Like I, I could, you know, you never know when you um, might have to prune something out in the field for me. So I find this all pretty handy. Yeah. But that said, I like, like I said, this is the very basic in my pockets. Right. Yeah. Could carry my next step up would be my shoulder bag. And in that I always have a silky pocket boy, um, you know, small folding saw, which would be a significantly better tool. Hmm. But if I'm, need a, a you know if i don't have have my bag with me this is a perfectly good yeah we could talk about that um maybe as a tradition between yours and mine or because i uh i never without a bag i don't drive uh, i have a license but i have a terrible fear of driving and i don't drive so i don't have a regular vehicle that i can store but you know we you need to drive where you live <laughs> yes <laughs> like in well, fact I mean, you're in your uh, car because your internet didn't work. Your uh, mic on your phone, on your computer was, was buzzing. So you, you, and your phone didn't get enough reception. You had to drive what five, 10 minutes to get better reception than actually do this. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, whoever's, you know, situation and requirements will hugely affect what they EDC. Uh, if you work in a school, you're probably not going to carry a folding knife. If you, um live out in the bush with no transport you probably carry a larger bag um so yeah uh, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff some people would edc are in my truck which is never that far away from me unless i'm hiking in which case i'll carry a bag with the appropriate stuff in at that yeah. stage um cool all right well let's move on here so oh, I have two O lights in my, so I have two different O lights in my EDC. You have two of the same. It looks like I, I have the old one and then the new one came out. And so right in my pocket. Now I have a larger, I have the S one R batten to the, which is a size of my thumb. Um, th this is a, a great one, but, when I'm at work, I've got to put tape measures and pencils and bits of wood and what have you in my pockets. But if I have a flashlight on my key ring, or in this case, two flashlights on my key ring, then, then, then I'm never going to take them out to make room for the tape measure or whatever else. Um, I literally can't find an excuse to leave the house without a flashlight if it's attached to my keys. Yeah. Um, I have, um, um, you'll see my agency, but I have a, the mini one. It only costs about $10 and I have one on every keychain because I have different, you know, I have my regular keychain, but then I have a, a set of just bike lock keys mm -hmm. and, and my gun cabinet key. Um, and I keep, and that's just used internally or outside because I, um, I keep my bikes locked even in my shed, you know, my property, I can still keep them locked. So, and so, yeah, and my, and my wife has two sets of keys for a car. Each one has one of these on there, you know, so uh, with the little ones. Yeah. But um, 
they can't take a battery. And I like having one that takes a battery, one that takes a USB on me, because I really like the primary one, the USB, but I, I always like to have a battery one as a backup in case I forget to charge. And having two, I guess, one's probably always going to have juice in it. Yeah, I mean, they, these little ones, they don't last forever, um, battery-wise. And so, yeah, the, the idea is I got a second one. I didn't take the other one off because then you have two. Um, yeah. They're so small, it makes no difference. But, I mean, one important thing to think about EDC is nowadays we all carry a smartphone. Right. And the light on the smartphone is my number one flashlight. It's not yeah. a good flashlight and it uses up the battery on your phone, which is why you carry a second flash, you know, an actual flashlight. But always the easiest thing to grab is your phone. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I, I mean, obviously a phone is, is a central part of a contemporary EDC, be it your field guides or your... Yeah emergency contact or anything whatever it is your phone is is your yeah main device all right let's move you got some pretty interesting stuff coming up uh well this is not so interesting but you have you, you you don't just have your keys loose you have them in these key smarts so i'm thinking yeah. maybe again it, it it reduces the amount of s space in my pocket if your if your keys are huge you're more likely to take them out of your pocket and put them down at which point you don't have all your tools on you. Yeah. That is my, my number one thing is that if you keep your EDC to a size that doesn't weigh you down, you're not going to unload it at any stage. But um, yeah, so that, that just keeps, keeps my keys tightened to get together and, reduces pocket size i'll have to give these a try i have because i run a facility so i have keys to a facility as well as my own home and then i usually have a bike you know whatever i have at least one bike lock that i carry you know outside of my home so it ends up being quite a few keys so and some of the keys have like the the bike lock keys and when i have like the classic coating you know that makes me thicker so mm -hmm. i have to you know give this a try yeah i I've tried some of the, the fancy ones. Um, I mean, this is a perfect, perfectly reputable brand, but um, there are sort of like fancy ones made out of fancy materials that are, um, you know, 60 plus bucks. And they were just too big. This yeah. is a nice, simple, flat version. I mean, it defeats the purpose if you try to condense everything, if you then get something really big to put them in. Right. Cool. Um, all right, we got, um, this is, I think this is pretty cool. Uh, what do we got here? This uh, EDC bottle opener keychain. It's, it's a whistle. It's, um, uh, growing up in the hills, Northern England, there was a few, well, you know, when we went mountain biking as kids, there was a few things that my parents made me carry and one was always a whistle. And um, nowadays, they seem to get the name of a rape whistle, but there is a million situations where you need to attract attention. Um, and a whistle is a useful tool. I mean, even to the point of as a defense tool, you whistle it in someone's face, they're backing off. It's um, a whistle is a really overlooked useful tool in my mind. I don't have one in my EDC. Sometimes I have a bag or jacket that has like it built into the, you know, like a, like a, one of those plastic, you know, um, I can't think of it, you know, like the, like on a to uh, zipper or whatever. Yeah. Or like the, uh, you know, like the, the buckles, buckles, plastic buckles. buckles. I'll often yes. have one, some of them have those built into them. Yeah. But yeah, right. I'll have to get one of these. All right. Um, and, uh, you, you always have a furrow rod with you? Lisa yeah, I mean, other people will carry a lighter. I, that's just what uh, a furrow rod is easier to attach to your keys. I tried the little um, fuel lighters for a long time, um, but they kind of, they eventually evaporate if you don't use them. I found this was like really simple. 
and bushcrafter bushcrafters are obsessed with power rods yeah it's <laughs> it's a thing you know obviously that doesn't isn't any use if you don't have something to scrape it on but i always have my leatherman or my knife or whatever with me so that is my my combustion my ignition i often have a magnesium a little you know, little magnesium fire starters which is mm -hmm. I usually throw one of those in my bag, but this is this is handy. And uh, this little device here. Okay, so this was a little bit of uh, luxury in a lot of ways. I mean, you can get very cheap pry tools. This is a handmade titanium. I think it costs 40, 50 bucks. But um, prying things open, I mean, at work, I use them a lot for I mean, my number one use for it is prying off little nylon guides off the foot of furniture. But um, it is too tempting when you have a knife or a leatherman to try and pry with those things. And the hinges and the blades of those tools are not designed for prying and they will break. So this is simply to stop you trying to pry things open. Plus it opens beers, so um, that's always yeah. a plus. If you drink beer, that need that. Well, sometimes I drink Mexican beer. I'm not a fancy beer drinker. No. <laughs> uh, I like this, your uh, tracking bandana. So I, this was the tracking bandana I had in my pocket. I mean, this was the bandana I had in my pocket when you asked me to send you a photo. I don't always have a tracking bandana. This one's super cool. Uh, I just think it's fun. Um, I have this plan of ticking off every single footprint on this, but... I'd have to do some traveling. We don't have armadillos in this area. Yeah. <laughs> but um they're supposed to be showing up my where I live pretty soon. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, they keep they're 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 I think they're pushing up towards Virginia and they'll be they'll be in Pennsylvania in probably twenty years. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so they are a bandana, it's useful for everything for time of hair bag, wiping something, picking up something that's hot. Um, through to you know emergency bandage, um, a bag if you find something you want to collect, fungi or something, or you know just wrap it up in in a bandana. Bandana is unbelievably useful. And it's cool to have the tracks there. Yeah. Yeah, that's just a fun one. Yeah. I think that's it. Now, now, now here's here's mine. We can critique mine. Mm -hmm. So I. Um, I always carry a bag because I I don't have a car to put things in. You know, I mean, there's some stuff in my wife's car, but generally I always have this. And so uh, this is, uh, I don't think I mentioned a bag in the rest of this is an Orvis bag. I also have a, a mystery ranch, uh, you know, double shoulder backpack that I, I, I use extensively as well. And I have, um, I forget, Sierra Desires or something like a, a, fanny, a proper fanny pack as well. And I use, I use all, this is the one I use more than anything else, but often if I'm going to work, I need, I bring my bigger bag um, because I, 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 if I'm have to, sometimes I have to carry paperwork and this isn't quite, I have to fold the paperwork to put it in this. So I kind of, I like that mystery wrench bag a lot, but I really just like having this so I can, this is if I'm going birding and if I'm riding my bike or going birding, I, I tend to bring this bag. Um, right. And there's these, uh, I have dedicated bag binoculars <laughs> and these are, these Leicas stay with this bag. And I, uh, I have um, a spare, a pair of small Koas that I put in my other bag. And then I tend to keep my um, big st full size Steiners in my chest harness in my other bag. But I, you know, I rotate about right now. My bags are, my binoculars are mostly um, living by windows because I'm home so much. As you can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I always carry a battery um, and I got a phone scope battery. Um, I'm not the city stuff about, a, I don't always remember to charge it, but I, I like to have a power bank because, uh, you know, I'm, I don't have a car. I could, I could charge my phone in. Um, so I like to have a battery. And I got this from PhoneScope. This is a good price, and I like PhoneScope, but I was ordering stuff from them anyway, so I got it. Um, if you want to do scoping, highly recommend their product. 
And I, because I have a bag, I carry a fixed blade knife very often. And so I carry just one of these, you know, uh, inexpensive more knives. Can't go wrong. That is such a good knife. Fantastic knife. Yeah, I mean, it, I have uh, two more knives, uh, although I'll probably get more and buy the pack soon just because why not? But there's, um, I have the, the the bushcraft one. It's, I think, right? It's a little bit field craft. It's the knife, it has a little bit a thicker and like kind of like broader blade. And yeah, and I think it's a, it's a carbon steel blade. I'm a sucker for more. I have a, a collection of different moras. This is the knife that if someone says, what knife should I buy? The Mora Companion is the knife you should buy. Um, Without spending someone, $100, there's someone, no alternative. Someone you know is named Mora. Are you at liberty to say who that is? <laughs> if, if, the, if the name has anything to do with the life company? It, it, it has nothing to do with the company. Um, but um, no, my, my daughter's first knife was a Mora. Um, and I, yeah, th these are, these are excellent knives. I'm in the process of putting together a video of trying to destroy one of these knives because ah. everyone says, oh, it's not a full tang knife. I'd rather buy a Bear Grylls Gerber for three times the price because it's a full tang knife. But these knives are solid. I yeah. have failed to break it yet. So, um, yeah, good choice. And um, I gave uh, for Christmas. I gave. Um, I bought one of those. I I gave like uh, everybody like. Uh, I had three people. Had, I gave like the same gift. Essentially, I I bought a three pack of more knives. Gave them all more knife, and they gave them a tourniquet and an Israeli bandage and an Olight flashlight, little tiny one. It was like fifty bucks each, and they got That's a excellent. yeah, really good gear. Um, yeah. So I think I actually have the smaller one. I have a. I couldn't find it, but I have a this Gerber. It's just inexpensive. I think it was like thirty dollars. This was is fifty, but I think this one has the scissors, and I don't have it. But I, I like the I like the Gerber. I like the they have this spring Gerber. Um, I forget what it's called. The uh, suspension. Uh, I really like that one. I use that one in Alaska, like making duck traps, like underwater, like using mm -hmm. like to to tie them to put them on the um, conduit, like underwater on, in the in the hose clamps and everything. I use, and it didn't rust or anything. So, uh, you know. I'm, again, I tend to lose things, so I don't want to spend you know the money on the Leatherman. But these Gerbers have always served me pretty well. Always carry, I almost always carry a Simon knife. This is a small one I keep on my keychain, um, and it has scissors and a, and a blade and tweezers. I find the tweezers are some of the handiest things to have um, because I you know, for getting splinters and for uh, dealing with ticks. I of, often will not carry a Leatherman um, or type you know multi tool to Gerber. I'll carry uh, just a bigger Swiss Army knife. Uh, often, I, it's the the whatever one has a. I like having Phillips head screwdriver and a, and a saw um, with yep. Swiss Army knives because uh, for again bluebird boxes, I need to uh, uh, for birdhouses. I need to I'm the Phillips head often to uh, you know if I'm out if I'm just walking the grounds and I see a, a birdhouse that slipped off on its pole, I can just you know work you know, I get I need a Phillips head to adjust it or to like maintain them. So I uh, always need a Phillips head. Um, and my wife doesn't drink. So my pre uh, when I've ha I had previous girlfriends that did, so having the one with the corkscrew was handy. But now that my wife doesn't drink, um, I don't really need a, the corkscrew as much as I need a Phillips head. So yeah, this is my knife. I have, I have, you know, I have a drawer full of folders, but um, I like these Kershaw's. They, uh, I like the one-handed opening. I think that's really important. Um, because you never know when you're, you know, you're tied up in something and you, and you really could use your, uh, a hand for your opening. You know, if, if in hunting, if you, if you fall out of your tree stand and you're dangling, you might need to, you might need to cut your safety harness off, you know? I, I fully believe that one handed opening is a safety device on a knife. Absolutely. If the, the biggest accidents happen when knives are not necessarily cutting, but are out. If yeah. you have to put, if you have something in your one hand and then you cut it, but then you need two hands to close that knife, then that knife stays open. Yeah. And that is a, that is a sharp blade rolling around, uh, or you put it down, which again is dangerous. You need to be able to open and close a knife with one hand so that you close it. 
Absolutely. So, you know, my philosophy with this is I like Kershaw's, and these are inexpensive. Although this is probably not Oregon made, Kershaw's probably Chinese made, uh, but it serves me just fine. I also also have an Olight. Um, I I keep this in my bag in addition to this one, the small one. I mean, ten dollars for these, great stocking yeah. stuffers. I just tend to have them on every keychain. You know, I, I have one of those in every one of my bags. I love that light. And the first one you showed, the the mini baton there, uh, I'm, I actually have that beside me here too. That is an excellent flashlight. I mean, to think 10 years ago that you could have a thousand lumens the size of your thumb, that actually the battery lasts on that thing. I mean, it, it's flashlight technology is extraordinary in comparison yeah. to 10 15 years ago yeah i i was in um i have a stream light a weapon light that i uh i mean this looks like a regular little flashlight but it was made for to to use this clamp on a rifle and i ended up buying these uh, lights by enforce that the mount and the layer are integral so it's more streamlined so i retired that light as a weapon light and i used it as a um, I keep that in my other backpack, but I use that in Australia for spotlighting. It was great. You know, it was, it did really well. A lot of these small lights are, are too bright, too bright for owling. I mean, if you are pointing that, that on its turbo, uh, the, the, uh, the other one you showed, if you show uh, pointing that on its turbo, which is a thousand lumens, then um, you, you are seriously disturbing that owl. Yeah, I mean, the, it, it, they have lower settings, but it, it's more than we could possibly need in most circumstances. In these tiny little lights, it's very impressive. Absolutely. This $17 for a spork worth every penny. <laughs> I should, yep. um, this, and don't, you know, the light by fire makes a plastic version, they break in your bag. Um, they're great for your mess kit. You know, if you have a mess kit and you, that, you know, is going to be in a container, but just to have, I like, just, I love this. It just lives in my, in my bag and it's so handy to have a, a, a tool, a eating tool. You never, you know, I use this so often. I hand it to people all the time. And it's $17, but worth every penny. I saw a review recently though, that of these, um, like, uh, metal tools um like this or or and they actually i forget who who did the review it might have been aria i don't know outside magazine maybe but they they um they recommended just the long fork um with the long handle but i love this i actually have another one that has a it's 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 shorter and it has like a, a little screwdriver or whatever I, so i keep that with the olight in my fanny pack with but normally uh um yeah, my shoulder bag has one of those um, very small. It's like the bowl of a spoon with a, but it's a spork. Uh, yeah. I think it's Columbia River knife and tool, um, little keychain type spork. Yeah. And to be honest, I usually go back to my truck where I have a an actual fork that came from my kitchen. Right, but, <laughs> but if, you're, um, if, yes, you're no. if you're stuck, it's uh, fine, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but this is, I think, this is a much better piece of kit. Um, so I do carry a, uh, I carry trauma kit with me at all times. Um, and often I'll, uh, so I, I don't know. I've lost since lost. I have one, like, uh, what is it? The, um, cat, the American rescue, um, with a proper windlass that you turn and it's a wall. I have a whole med kit. that's a wall right now. I don't know if it's at work or whatever. Um, I'm trying to figure out where that went, but I had, a this little max position pouch that I could Velcro to my uh, binocular harness. And I also had this uh, um, little windlass and I can't find uh, this, uh, this, this tourniquet you can't find, but I like this tourniquet cause it, it, it packs pretty flat and it's pretty small. And so I have like one of these in every one of my bags. I have them in my wife's car and you never know when you're going to have, you know, you can, I find th these way more useful. Um, Maybe once in your life, you'll be unlucky enough to need a cat type tourniquet. Um, and you better have one when you need one. But these things, if you need to apply 
some pressure to a wound, if you need to make a sling, there's a lot more applications for this. And, you know, at the price, you're not worried about using it for other things. Right. Um, and and your comment you made at the beginning of this was, if it's not small, it's not going to truly be EDC. Right. And I... I'll go to a wedding or at the opera, <laughs> you know, and I put this in my uh, blazer pocket, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I, I always have a tourniquet with me. I, and often I have a uh, compressed gauze. I use, sometimes I have uh, again, I'm missing my, my main um, med kit. I don't know where, where it went. Maybe it's at work. I can't find it. I got separated from my bag, unfortunately. Um, and I have some clotting gauze, some hemostatic gauze in that, but this compressed gauze, Wood packing, it's always good to have. You never know. Um, these, um, this is standard as a as a alternative to chest seals, right? Um, you don't actually use the Vaseline um, galls in this. You, um, you, uh, you actually just use the the packaging to as a as a makeshift chest seal. Apparently, they're they're like standard in ambulances because the proper like chest seal made by a you know for a sucking chest wound they they're almost the same thing but they're like they cost like twenty dollars a piece or whatever and so these are really really good as an alternative to that and mind you i i i I live in philadelphia i might encounter someone with a gunshot wound and or been stabbed and in a place where the police can't get to them quickly people go you know i work at a park where people get sometimes get murdered and i i've heard gunshots pretty regularly i think it's just people practicing uh so i may encounter someone been been shot so that's just you know and i don't want to actually get uh trained to have a uh, um, narcan because you know i encounter people that might be um you know have um ODing. so this i this is a byproduct of being an urban environment you know? yeah the, your edc obviously reflects your environment but i think that any camper or any, you know, any wildlife observer who's going out and they're splitting wood at camp or any of these, there, there is a, you don't have to be a victim of a, a gun crime to need serious first aid. And um, so, yeah, these are a useful yeah, in a, beyond in a, those environments. It's funny in some ways, I mean, I, I didn't put them in here, but I usually just have band-aids somewhere. Um, but a band-aid, you know, what you use a band-aid for isn't going to save your life. It can save your life if you're, if you're stuck without medical attention for days or months. And a band-aid or, you know, some antiseptic cream could, could actually save your life because, you know, you can get a bad infection and it can't get treated. But generally, in EDC, just out and about, you're going to be able to get to you know, just, you could just use a napkin or something to stop the bleeding into, you know, it's more a cosmetic thing or whatever. You might just ruin your clothes, but you'll be fine. But it's a band aid's not going to stop hemorrhaging. And right. you need something quick access, you know, to stop. Um, and I work with public events and, you know, like Boston, there is a marathon, the attack of the marathon. Like I might be at an event and, you know, maybe in my, my professional life, I'm working it for work or, um, it could be a uh, concert and someone, a terrorist attack, and, you know, it'd be good to be able to, you know, stop my own bleeding, but let alone, you know, bleeding of someone else. So it's just, there's no reason to, you know, spend 40, 50 bucks, get a few, you know, and just have it with you. I think is uh, you never know when you'll need it. And it's something to consider with this, you know, as part of that is a Israeli bandage, some kind of compression bandage, um, again, to stop uh, hemorrhaging. So, you know, we're not going to get into like actually how to use um, this stuff. We can do that later and maybe get someone who's an actual expert on, but you know, you should all have training in this. And I haven't uh, actually gone around to get professionally trained for this, which I plan to because training is very important, but is that the end of my EDC? Oh, I would, I can't not talk about watches. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't put my watch in my, in my photo there, I, I, but um, sorry, carry on. So, this is not the same watch that I have in my picture. Um, 
that's the warning. We should wrap it up soon because we only have 45 minutes on, on, on the okay. free Zoom. Um, so I carry a Seiko SKX, but the, um, the SKX is no longer in production. So I may have a bunch of watches, but I like a rotating bezel um, because I, I am not a diver. I actually was about to be get my certification uh, and start the training when my wife got pregnant. So that kind of put an end to that for a little while. But I like that they're waterproof and people don't usually use the, the, the bezel and the timing bezel these days anyway for your air supply. Um, but I use it because often I have groups of students and I need to, I need to know when it's time to get them to the next station, right? They come for me for my, for you know, 15 to 30 minutes. And then I got to do my, my lesson. And then I ferry them to the next, um, to, to the next station. Right. So I need, and, but I don't want to keep looking at my phone. So it, with the timing bezel, I can just, you know, turn it and I have, I can really easily look and see when, when it's time to move. So I, I always, for work, especially, I always like to have a, um, a rotating bezel and I think it's and I like um, an automatic watch because it don't have to worry about the battery going dead on me you know right. the problem is if you don't wear it it'll it'll you'll lose the time you know but it's with that said you, you could you'll gain or lose 10 20 seconds a day with these so and of course watch keeps more accurate time but the battery can go bad so there's trade-offs and I mean I have a couple quartz watches that I that I grab and go but I tend to use um, automatic watches that you know self-winding yeah, I wear a Seiko 5 also automatic. I I don't know which one it is. It's nothing fancy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the yeah you have to keep up on them once in a while. Just adjust them a minute here or there. But you've got the rough idea. And, and we all, I mean, again, we all need to see a phone nowadays. So uh, if you need the exact time, you can get your phone out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, do to to the millisecond or whatever on your phone. This is this is a different tool. Yeah, it's funny. I have a I have you know a watch case and I have a you know a a, cor a solar a quartz watch in there and I uh or a couple of them. And I set my time to those. <laughs> you know, as yeah. a but you know again the uh, and there's not much resale value in a in a in a quartz watch. But so is that. Oh, and uh, I, I keep my I tend to keep my watches, especially when I wear every day on a NATO rather than a um, rather than a a leather band. And I don't like bracelets. I only have one watch on a bracelet that I only wear on special occasions. I like a leather band or uh, or these NATO straps. The thing about NATO is you uh, you you install the pin bars, the spring bars. You you have yours on NATO by chance? So you yeah, do mine, mine's on NATO. Yeah. Yeah. So if people don't know NATO, you you install the spring bars on your watch without putting with not within a band and this it's a, a fabric goes through both bars and then loops through it so that way if you one of the spring bars breaks um the 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 watch uh will, will still hang it's because it's looped through at least one i actually would like to see watches just made with pass through lugs rather than actually have a spring bars and just a dedicated nato entirely i wonder why they don't must be a reason. The downside, uh, I, these Bartons, I'm a little bit of a conundrum with. I love, I find these to be so unbelievably comfortable. They use like seatbelt material. They're so comfortable. The problem is, is Barton uses a um, spring bar in the, some of these companies use spring bars in the buckle. So it almost defeats the purpose because then the buckle could, you know, could fail uh, with the spring bar in it. But I just really find the natives to be so much more comfortable. Yeah, I've, I've, um, last couple of NATO bands I've had have been from Maritac, mm. from County Com, and um, they're great quality. But the one I had before this one had a much more solid buckle. And then I thought I was buying exactly the same one again. That it, it doesn't have the same yeah. solid buckle. I have a um, there's cheap NATO straps dot com and a couple other ones. So I have other NATOs that don't have a spring bar in the buckle, but whatever this material Barton uses is so comfortable. Like I just don't want to wear it in another NATO. Um, maybe there's other companies that make, you know, it might be worth it. It's a couple, you know, a little bit more money, but they're so unbelievably comfortable. And I, of course I have it in the James Bond. So the, uh, in 
I think Casino Ro- well the first the first uh, Bond that had Sean Connery in it. He's You're wearing the the black, green, and red. I have that so as the well. MI5. I, uh, so that's I have, what I have. The MI the MI five colors. Um, but they didn't know. Because that, I love James Bond also. But they didn't know that's what the color was until recently because the. Uh, um, so this 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 watch here, the, this band with the gray and black, before they had the de- uh, like Blu-ray redid it, people had to stop their VHS tape and see what band he was wearing. It was a Sean Connery was wearing a, a Rolex Submariner on a band, uh, and uh, that was actually undersized. And they thought it was just gray and black, so they made these to replicate that. And then when they got the better footage, they realized it was actually. Uh, was a black with green stripes with red edges to the stripes. And yeah, so, so that's I, what I got because of that. Yeah, because I I, I love James Bond. But, and I have uh, I, I have I have both, and I have a a Vostok and 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 amphibia that I actually often wear on the James Bond because I think it's funny the a Russian dive watch on a Bond strap. It's kind of yep. funny. <laughs> and his Submariner looks ridiculous on a, a NATO strap like that because it is so undersized. Yeah, I mean it, it looks like his you know tens of thousands of dollars of watch is going to fall fall off his wrist because it's attached by a squimpy little well strap. probably what happened was is is i know in in the books he's mentioned that he's wearing a rolex right uh they, they don't go into detail they say oyster perpetual so ian fleming wore an explorer so i think it probably was, was an explorer but because bond was in the navy before he was a special you know agent he uh they, they went with the submariner because of naval heritage and my guess is that the, 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 for what people speculate is that the band, the, the bracelet wasn't sized to Sean Connery. So they just threw it on a, on a, on a NATO strap. So he, he just have it. But, and I guess, you know, people didn't think they'd notice it was on a strap, but they, they did to replicate it. Yeah. And, you know, people usually don't wear um, watches um, in a tuxedo at all, let alone a sports watch, let alone on a NATO, but Bond kind of changed that. Um, I think we're going to be um, kicked off of Zoom soon because I had the free version only costs 45 minutes. Um, but I think this is a fun run through. It shows a little bit of the difference in our EDC and and philosophies. And I think moving forward, we're gonna um, we're gonna talk about like a category of something in general. And that and I think we're gonna probably start with knives because who doesn't love knives? You like knives. I'm gonna go I a little knives. bit. Of, yeah, so I think we're going to go with knives and probably fixed blades, folders, multi-tools, and you have a whole bunch, right? Because you, you – do people at this point – are you getting stuff for free or sent to you for te- – or are you at that stage yet? Or you no, just- no, no, no. I'm, I'm nothing like that. Um, I just spend a lot of money on knives. Yeah. Don't tell my wife. Um, <laughs> but, hey, I could be into guns, and that is significantly more expensive, or motorbikes, yes. or cars, or – or, or, I just worked for someone who collects fire fire trucks, antique fire trucks, wow. like full size fire trucks. So the, there's, you know, hobbies are hobbies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? and then, like I have, you know, 15 watches or so right now. And but I mean, watches can obviously you can get watches that cost, I mean, literally millions of dollars. Um, mm-hmm. But I just really like watches that cost. You know, I have a few that cost a couple hundred dollars, but I like watches that cost around the hundred dollar mark, you know, that I could find yeah. on eBay or whatever. And I love a lot of Russian watches. Uh, well, this is a lot of fun for me. Um, and I get to talk to my good buddy who I don't see nearly enough. Um, hopefully we'll have a, a, you know, maybe every two weeks or so, or every, you know, we have a lot of time to make content now. So maybe we'll make more content now, but, uh, we, you know, yeah. we'll do another it's, review. it's fun. That'd be great. Yeah. Awesome. buddy. Yeah. Well, uh, give my best to your family. And if you like this, uh, podcast, um, please or YouTube, please like and subscribe on your on YouTube or your podcast. Um, we're gonna p- put the audio out in, in general. I mean, anyway, so it might not be as good without the pictures, but you know, I think we described the products pretty accurately. And I I like I watch a lot of review channels, and sometimes I wish they just had the audio because like I could look, I can you know Google the pictures, and I don't, I don't want to be looking at a screen. So, all right, everybody, thank you so much. Uh, Chris will right. be in touch. Thanks. Cheers. And again, and uh, Birding and Bushcraft Instagram. Yeah. Thank you so much. Cheers. Okay, bye.